This video is about injection moulding. Uh, injection moulding is probably the most commonly used process with thermoplastics and it can be used to produce products that are very complicated uh, and obviously three dimensional. Now the ways you can generally tell a product has been injection moulded is obviously the level of complexity. If they're a very complex product this is probably one indication they probably have been injection moulded. Injection moulded products are also solid, they're not generally hollow forms like a um, a, a hollow um, tube or something like this. Um, they often have a split line which is obviously where the mould um, pieces have been taken apart, the mould halves taken apart so you can take the product out and they will have a sprue. This is an indication as to where the polymer has been injected into the mould to actually fill and make the product. Now examples of um, thermoplastic products that have been made using injection molding might be using sort of polystyrene to produce a pencil case, polypropylene to produce uh, a chair commonly used in uh, schools or offices um, and maybe ABS for the production of sort of electronic casings like the casings of a, a monitor or a, a keyboard or something like this. Now there's many advantages with, with uh, injection moulding and obviously the first is what I've talked about before so you can produce very very complicated 3D shapes and this is very important as well if you want to produce an item that is going to be ergonomic because if you want it to fit the sort of proportions and the, the uh, shapes and sizes of the human body it's going to have to be very complicated and, and be quite an organic or difficult shape to be produced in any other form. Now, you can also produce very high volumes of products because once the mould has been set up effectively, all you are doing is um, injecting uh, the polymer in, the product is then injected out, and then you can repeat the process over and over again. And the accuracy should not really change because obviously as long as the mould stays consistent, which it generally would as it's checked with uh, quality control, the product will stay consistent as well. And you can also obviously insert various different um, things as we talked about captive nuts before, but metal inserts into the um, item as it's being produced and obviously other fixings so if you think about something like a remote control case the integrated fixings that obviously hold the bottom half and top half together uh, can be produced and obviously the level of accuracy you you would get from this allows things like the the sliding battery um, uh, covers and things like this to be produced as separate parts so accurate that they actually fit together with uh, very accurate tolerances. Now the only problems I suppose with um, injection moulding is the initial setup of the actual mould and the tooling is going to be very expensive because generally the moulds are made out of uh, a, a solid piece of metal that's, that's milled out probably with a, a computer controlled milling machine or something like this and therefore those moulds are very very expensive. Okay. And it's only really suitable probably if you want a very large run of products, if you're going to make sort of thousands of products before you can make some sort of profit from this. Now, the questions relating to this process are going to revolve mostly around you understanding exactly all the stages, all of the main elements uh, involved in the um, injection molding process, and obviously the, the types of plastics, thermoplastics that can be used. So I'm just going to talk through the kind of general uh, stages that happen. Now, Right at the top of the um, diagram you can see just down there, you've got what's called the hopper. Now the hopper is used to just hold all of the, the polymer granules or powders and any additives that you've had mixed in there. So you might be adding sort of plasticizers or UV stabilizers or something like that. And basically they're mixed into the hopper before they fall down into that chamber where you've got the Archimedean screw. Okay, Now that chamber is obviously heated and the action of the Archimedean screw turning actually helps to agitate the powders, making them rub against each other, and this also increases the heat. Now, obviously these are thermoplastic polymers, so when they're heated, they start to soften, and they get to a point where they're so soft that they can be injected into the mold. Now, a hydraulic ram, once it's got enough polymer um, uh, melted or softened, sorry, in place, will force uh, through the feed hole and into the actual mould that you're producing and then ensures, because there's a lot of force going on there, a lot of pressure, that the whole uh, cavity of the mould is filled with plastic and it's touching all sides of the inside of the mould. Now it's obviously then left to wait for a short amount of time to cool and therefore solidifying or hardening the, the polymers, which will literally only take a couple of seconds, and then the, the halves or the various parts of the mould are opened up and 
an injector pin will force the mould out of the, the actual mould. And now, obviously, it will be inspected by a quality controller, the product that came out, in this case on the diagram, a, a cup. And they'll probably be looking for things like, has the, you know, the plastic formed all the way around the mould? They'll be looking at where the sprue is to ensure that it's um, completely... Um, Okay, and they'll be looking at the mould itself as well to make sure there's no uh, leftover particles of plastic or anything before another cycle can actually start.